to um, flip the the uh, schedule a little bit. Um, we're on on the program. You saw our, our next speaker is uh, Andrew McEwen, um, but we're going to since um, Chu Waiyi is uh, is ready here now. We're going to uh, bring her on, uh, and uh, we're we're going to hear from um, Waiyi who is the director of the network trade platform at Singapore Customs. And we're going to hear about how uh, we're going to um, transform uh, how Singapore Customs is working to transform trade uh, across all the um, uh, all the different players in in the trade ecosystem. So uh, Yi, uh, welcome. Hello, thank you. Thank you for having me at the conference. Happy to be here, John. Great. I'll just check, uh, are you able to uh, uh, share? I, I think you're already sharing your screen. So we'll just wait until it comes up and make sure that uh, that it's uh, displaying uh, properly. Okay, I'm going to share screen. If you don't see it uh, displaying properly, just let me know. There's always are, a are plan you, B. Are you, plan always, a. are you always sharing it? Uh, are you already sharing it? Uh, no, just just getting okay. it up right now. So, okay. uh, give me a second and you should be seeing the screen coming on right now. Okay, if and if you can put it in, we, we can see it. Can you put it in presentation mode? Uh, unfortunately, that means we're going into Plan B. <laughs> well, I, I yeah, okay. I thought we uh, were presenting from the Google Drive. Uh, yes, we would do just that instead of the okay. instead of the PowerPoint. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This is. You see uh, this it? Are good. we yes. are we good to go? Yes. Certainly. Uh, Excellent. All yours. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. Um, so maybe as a quick start, I'm Waii. I work in Singapore Customs, uh, primarily on the network trade platform. So what I'm going to do today is um, share with everyone a little bit about what the NTP is, uh, which is what we call, affectionately call the network trade platform. Otherwise, it's quite a, a tongue twister. Uh, show you what we're currently doing, what we hope to achieve, why we have the platform, um, but also true to the theme of, the, of why we're here today about APIs. I'm going to let us um, into zoom in a little bit into one of the services we launched um, two years, one plus year ago, uh, and it's an API only service and talk about some of the transformative or the way we're trying to do things differently uh, and how APIs and data enable us to do that in the trade space. So uh, let's get started. Um, this is a journey that we started a couple of years ago. And in September of 2018, uh, we were able to officially launch the NTP. Uh, and it was officially launched by our Deputy Prime Minister. And he talked about the transformational, he talked about NTP as a transformational platform. Uh, and that's quite uh, nicely fitting into what we're trying to talk about today. We're not just talking about digitalization we're not just talking about platform i think we're we really have the intent to change the way things are being done and change it for the better so what is the ntp uh, the ntp this is a screen grab from our home page it is a one-stop interface and it is intended to allow all the stakeholders in the trade ecosystem to interact and interact and transact digitally uh, why did we start up doing this primarily because trade is a complicated process. Um, by our estimates and estimates in industry involves up to 25 parties, 30 to 40 documents. Um, and the opportunity lies in the fact that 60 to 70% of that data in those documents are reused or reusable at least once, uh, more often than not, more than once. So what do we end up uh, wanting to do? We want to be able to connect the different stakeholders uh, through the NTP, and through the NTP, give them onward digital connectivity to everybody else. So today on the NTP, after about three years, we have uh, over 5,000 user companies uh, who are registered and using the NTP in one way or another. Um, and 
what it, this really means is that these 5,000 companies have onward digital connectivity to 4,999 others. So that's kind of the power of platform. Uh, and that's one transformative dimension. Um, but for Singapore, we also want to be able to connect our ecosystem here of stakeholders and players with their counterparts overseas. Um, and that means that we're looking to connect our platform and our community with communities around the world and other platforms around the world, uh, other trade platforms around the world. Uh, so as a starter, we have connected ourselves uh, to with China Customs and we are already able to exchange uh, some documents with China Customs digitally end-to-end uh, -end, and that's the preferential certificate of origin and the certificate of non-manipulation. So with that connectivity, um, this is a quick snapshot of what our platform is about. Uh, we provide data exchange uh, and data utility and data tools. This enables the 5,000 plus companies on the NTP to digitally transact and it's up to them to choose who they want to transact. So we provide identity authentication and we provide the digital highway. Uh, from the government side of the house, uh, NTP is operated by customs uh, and we also then provide digital versions or the digitalization channel for our government services. I spoke briefly about the preferential certificate of origin between Singapore and China and also the exchange of the electronic certificate of non-manipulation. Um, last year, we also launched a electronic banker's guarantee program. So that means that today for traders who need to lodge a banker's guarantee with Sing uh, Singapore Customs, uh, the banks can do so directly on their behalf with us in a digital manner. So we no longer need someone to go to the bank to collect a banker's guarantee, uh, send it to our office, we verify the documents and then confirm the lodgement. Uh, all of that's done digitally. Uh, together with the claims process uh, thereafter if we ever have to call on the banker's guarantee. So these are some of the transformational changes we hope to bring and are aiming to bring. The other big change that uh, NTP started out uh, to want to be able to address is the ability to enable our stakeholders to reuse digital documents and digital data. So on this slide, you see... Um, from, if you're reading it from left to right, you see the different phases or the different activities that need to happen uh, in order for a trade transaction to, to complete. Um, and with each of those boxes, if you read from top to bottom on the left, you will see a list of documents that are typically used in trade. And as you go across from left to right, you will see green boxes and you will see, depending on your screen calibration, maybe yellow, maybe orange boxes. Um, and these are the opportunities for documents that are now listed on your left on the screen uh, to be reused in different stages and different times during the life cycle of a trade. Um, where you see orange boxes is where the data is created during that particular phase of trade uh, that then goes towards constructing that document. So the opportunity for digital data reuse is huge. Uh, and we enable some of this through uh, connections with traders, with service providers in this space. And let me show you what I mean. Uh, as you can imagine, a trade may start from understanding a market all the way to making payments and cross-cutting issues. Somewhere in between, you'll be financing your trade, preparing your documents, purchasing insurance, uh, coming to customs on both the export and the import side of the house to, uh, to submit documents for customs clearance. And in each of these transactions, you have different service providers helping our traders along the way. So I'm giving you a flavor of the next few slides of the various service partners that are on the NTP today. And with them on the NTP, with their API connectivity, our API connectivity, and we offer that to each and every company on NTP, um, they're now able to digitally share data, share digital documents, and facilitate um, the reuse, uh, which then results in efficiency, accuracy, and trade just going a lot easier and better. And how are we able to do that? I think part of uh, part of it is, of course, the technology is a, is a huge enabler. But we also are quite mindful 
uh, of the role that we need to play as government coming into this space, uh, we leave the companies to do what they know best, be it arrange freight, provide insurance, provide finance. Uh, as a government neutral, non-commercial facilitator, we come in to bring in the different parties, provide the utilities and provide the connectivity. Um, that also means we're an open platform. Uh, open meaning that we're non-exclusive, so uh, everyone can participate. And that's where we want to be able to catalyze the change, bring about the digitalization. And as an open platform, I think we are in the neutral, non-commercial position where we can then bring the ecosystem together and create that critical mass. Um, but last and, and also quite important is uh, because we are here as a public agency, uh, we operate on a not-for-profit basis. And therefore, while there is some cost recovery, uh, we are able then to make sure we aim for critical mass and lower the cost of adoption. And those are some of the transformative um, change-making uh, factors that we bring to the table in terms of helping our community here in Singapore uh, transform the way they do business and transform the way they currently trade. But I, I want to zoom in this afternoon uh, on a particular service where we've been able to take advantage of the ecosystem of different players coming together, take advantage also of digitalization and the availability of data. And with that, also take advantage of how APIs work uh, to bring about a new service to address a gap that previously wasn't so easy to address. So first of all, let me talk about the gap. What was the gap? Um, in trade finance, it's often very challenging for financial institutions to verify the prices of non-commodity goods. Uh, that's because there's a great variation, but the other problem is also because there isn't a reliable source of information uh, for financial institutions to call on. Right? So unlike commodities, say, or even energy products where they are traded on the market, where prices are available and known, uh, both spot prices and future prices, uh, manufactured goods, because of the variability uh, and the lack of open market trading, uh, these prices are not always known. Financial institutions also face the challenge, um, particularly now that a lot more is asked of them to check and keep in check money laundering activities, um, they need to know whether what their client claims is an underlying trait really exists. And we know of cases where, um, well, you could call it a phantom trait or a fraudulent trait because the underlying goods are not really moving and there is no trait. It's just a um, fabricated or fraudulent documents uh, being passed around as if there was something, uh, as if there were goods moving. So. There are a few challenges that financial institutions face in validating trade and validating the prices of manufactured goods that was previously difficult to address. So in a, this is a result of a quick poll that we did over a lunch uh, sharing uh, organized by the Association of Banks in Singapore. So we asked uh, the bank's uh, representatives in the audience, how do you typically perform price check for non-commodity goods that you are financing or your banks are facilitating? Uh, and interestingly, or about 32% of the respondents in the room that day said they do not check. 29% uh, said they would use uh, a B2C e-commerce website such as eBay, Alibaba, uh, Taobao, or Amazon. And we know that a B2C price, unit price, can be quite different from a B2B price. Uh, so herein, you can see that actually banks are really quite at a loss uh, in terms of how to do reliable price checks. So in 2019, um, we launched the Trade Finance Compliance Service. Uh, there was a little bit of coverage from some of our, our both our local as well as um, industry publications. So what was it? It was a joint effort uh, between ourselves, uh, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, and the leading financial institutions involved in trade finance here in Singapore uh, to address this gap. So what we are doing is because we've got the ecosystem together, because we are a digital platform, because we have the ability to tap the potential of APIs, we designed a service uh, that taps 
on the price information in permits that have been submitted to Singapore Customs, as well as the existence of a permit to enable financial institutions to access this information to boost their current compliance checks for trade finance. Now, this speeds up processing. It gives them greater assurance and certainty, helps them better manage risk. Um, but we are also quite mindful that some of this information is sensitive, is commercially sensitive. We are also obligated uh, as customs authorities to protect it. Um, so where the data is identifiable, traders would then have to give consent to customs uh, to share that data with their named or specified chosen banks. Um, so where what is what is the difference into in the before uh, or as is in the versus the to be back then? Um, the trade finance compliance checks were often manual, time consuming, and the data sources weren't uh, always reliable. Uh, with the trade finance compliance service that we're offering today, financial institutions have the option of reliable data, uh, and they can automate it because in the past, if you had to do manual checks and you had to go on Taobao or Amazon to search up prices, um, it can be time consuming and it may not have been possible for every financial institution to do this sort of financial price checks on every trade that they were financing. Um, but with APIs, that becomes possible. It becomes possible to do 100% checks and that would, can significantly lower not just risk, um, but fraudulent activities in the market as well. So let me explain a little bit about the service. Um, this service comprises of three APIs. Uh, and the beauty of APIs is that it allows the banks to consume the data all the way in situ into their processing systems so they don't need human intervention. They also don't need logins and uh, you know many accounts and passwords and their bank offices having to log into our systems and then having to digest uh, as a human being the information that they get and then processing these trade finance applications within their own systems. So the APIs enable them to consume the information in situ in their own systems. Uh, so the trade finance compliance service consists of three APIs. The first is a company's price check. This is an anonymized aggregated data price check for the banks to use. Uh, and we provide the average, medium, and interquartile prices uh, at the HS code level. That means product description level. Uh, and because this is anonymized and aggregated, uh, traders' consent is not required because we mask all the data. We pull that together. There are two other APIs uh, as part of the service, uh, and each of these APIs can be consumed independently or together. Uh, the second and third API requires the traders to give consent because at this level, it is identifiable and company-specific. So we offer an API service called uh, the company price check. So company singular here versus companies plural earlier on. Uh, the company price check allows a financial institution who has been given consent to access this data to see to ask for company specific data at the HS code product description uh, and looking at the historical unit prices that this particular client has typically traded this good for. Um, this allows them to really zoom in on the client uh, and the client's price point because as we all know, this very same product, uh, depending on brand, depending on quality, depending on uh, manufacturer can have uh, a significant price uh, range, right? And those price differences are actually legitimate. So when a bank or a financial institution is able to call on a company specific data, it can make their assessment uh, a lot easier and a lot more accurate. The third API uh, is what we call trade validation API. This allows the financial institution to provide uh, as part of their input data uh, invoice information and they can validate whether a permit, uh, an underlying permit exists for a particular trade. So this helps a bank or financial institution address the question of whether this is a phantom trade or this is real. So these are the three API services that we provide as part of the trade finance compliance checks uh, made available to bank. 
uh, where we have been able to, I think, make a difference is in the past, banks would not have had access to uh, permit-related data that their clients had submitted to customs. But with the idea of a government-operated neutral platform, uh, and also, of course, enabled by digitalization and data, uh, and th in this case, also together with the potential offered by APIs for straight through processing, integration right into your own systems, we've been able to bring two seemingly or previously not connected, unconnected transactions, one for customs compliance, the other for trade financing. We are able to then build that bridge across the two transactions and allow the transactions, the, the financing transactions, to benefit from the existence and the ability to tap into permit-related data uh, with consent of the traders, of course, and in that way be able to solve, break down the silos and solve a problem or fill a gap that was previously not uh, not addressed or not adequately addressed, right? So coming back to the issue of consent, uh, consent is quite important for us. And I think when we think about transformation, we think about improving the way decisions are being made, improving the quality of transactions, and of course, improving the quality of life for individuals performing those transactions. Uh, we are also quite mindful of the calibration and the balance uh, between making data available as well as protecting data confidentiality and the commercial sensitivities uh, of the companies operating in Singapore. Uh, so we have also quite an interesting consent management mechanism where traders can then come in, provide consent, retain control, uh, and decide how they would like to work with their banks. Um, so this is just a quick snapshot of uh, some of the screen grabs of how traders come in to give consent. Uh, they come in, they give consent, and they can also withdraw consent uh, given to banks at any point in time that they wish to. So as a quick summary, uh, when we think about NTP and how we want to transform trade, um, data is, of course, at the heart of it. APIs then enable us to share the data with each other and to share data with adjacent, uh, as we hand off uh, between adjacent transactions in the trade ecosystem. Um, but not just about productivity or efficiency or adjacency and handoffs, um, the ability to digitalize data, to have structured data, and the ability to then tap APIs has also enabled us to break down the silos and do a leap and a hop and connect uh, what may have appeared as seemingly isolated data sets and transactions to close a gap, right? In this case, in trade finance compliance service and do it from a win-win perspective. Uh, the banks get into a situation where they are better able to manage their risk. They're better able to meet their compliance obligations uh, for the trader because the banks can now process their applications faster for them it's potentially faster access to financing um, and also balancing it with full control, right? Meaning that their data would never be shared without their consent. Uh, and behind that, of course, are the APIs at work that enabled us, enable banks to make the queries, enable us to call on a consent database to check if it's there for us to return the data to the banks when it's possible to share and for us to inform them when it's not possible to share because consent had not been given. Uh, we have also then rolled out a mechanism in which banks can then request that we approach um, the traders for consent. Uh, and all of that is then enabled back end through APIs. So with that, um, I've come to the end of my presentation. Uh, a little bit about NTP, a little bit of how we have then used uh, both digital technology, digital capabilities, uh, structured data potential, as well as APIs to enable us to help close a gap, uh, not just in customs, not just in compliance, uh, but in, two, in a sector where uh, previously it may not have been possible to do so. And that's the price checks uh, and the trade validation for financial institutions. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Y.E. Um, this is a, a great example of how to put together uh, a uh, bring bring the partners together in in an ecosystem.
And um, I'm uh, just uh, interested in uh, how you went about this this journey, the sorts of challenges you you faced in in this journey, because with uh, an ecosystem like this, there's a huge network effect. Once yes. everybody is on it, or once 70 or 80 percent of the players are on it, then the the laggards just have to follow, or they won't be able to do business. But getting to that, get even getting to 30 percent or 40 percent is a challenge because the players look around and say, well, who else is on it? So how did how did you prime that that pump in order to uh, to get to that point? Um, I, I think there were a couple of factors um, that we took into consideration, a few things that we did. Um, the first of all was when we started to uh, design the service, we didn't do it all by ourselves, right? I th uh, we actually engaged industry. Um, so specifically for the compliance service, uh, it was co-designed and co-created with um, the regulator, the MAS here in Singapore, as well as with uh, the leading trade finance banks here. Um, close to 10 of them were involved in the co-design and the development uh, of the service. So that kinds of, uh, that gives us a little bit of a head start, right? We now do not need to convince uh, half of that community to come on board. Uh, they co-own that product. Um, when we talk about the rest of the ecosystem and about the network effect, I think we do have a, a small advantage because we are non-commercial. So a lot of times, some of that hesitation is about, if I'm on this platform, I get to do business with company A and B, but I also want to do business with company C and D and they're not on the platform. So is that going to create some form of um, a separation uh, or a dislocation? Uh, or silo. I think in this case, because we are a uh, open platform and we are also regulatory in nature, uh, and we have anchored the platform uh, with our own regulatory services. So if you're transacting with customs, uh, you do want to, we do put our own services there. So that helps create some of that critical mess. Mm, okay, uh, great, great insights. Thank you very much, uh, Waii, for, for sharing no that, uh, that with us. Um, we're, and wish you uh, continued success in developing uh, the platform uh, even, even wider. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you.